Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be talking about marketing, tennis marketing. How do each of the companies market to you? Stay tuned. All right, so how do each of these tennis racket companies market to you? Well, it's not hard since the history of rackets, even in the wooden times of rackets, in the 70s and the 60s, from the onset of television, right? They would put a racket into the best person's hands. Right. We all know Jack Kramer and the Jack Kramer pro staff. Right. We know um, Andre Agassi and the radical from head before that. It was the Donne for him. Right. We got Michael Chang and the graphite Two from Prince. Right. Pete Sampras, Wilson pro staff, 85. Right. So we all equate a person with a racket, right? Sometimes we call it the Sampras Pro Staff or the Chang Graphite 2, right? So it's all kind of, uh, not, it's subliminal, right? When you see your favorite tennis player out there um, holding a racket, you want to be just like them, just like a little kid, just like when I was a little kid, right? I saw Andre play. Oh, that's a cool Don A, or that's a cool head radical, right? Or Pete Sampras with that 85 square inch head pro staff, right? We wanted those rackets because our favorite person used those rackets, right? So that's the way that each of the companies kind of subliminally market to you. Right. If you think of Roger Federer, what do you think of the Roger Federer pro staff? Right. When this racket first came out in the 97 form in that black and red, man, I was selling these like hotcakes. This is a number one selling racket. Right. But people who weren't or shouldn't have bought these rackets were buying them because Fed was their favorite player. Right. I had little kids buying these up to, you know, like older people who shouldn't be using them. Um, this is the, this is the heaviest racket that they sell on the market, but people bought it because Roger, right? People, everybody loves Roger. Everybody wants to play with Roger's racket. Everybody wants to play like Roger. And maybe, you know, if you bought Roger's racket, you could play like Roger too. Right. So. Wilson and Roger, pro staff, synonymous with each other, right? It's kind of the same thing with uh, Rafa. You can't think of Rafa without um, Arrow. Arrow Pro, Pure Arrow, this banana, right? So you think you know it's an Arrow, some kind of Arrow, whether it was an Arrow Pro from before or the current Arrow Banana now, um, Rafa and Arrow, synonymous, right? Rafa sold a ton of rackets because his face is on this racket, right? He hits with a racket that looks like this, right? So you want to hit like Rafa. You want to hit with a ton of spin, right? You want to be like Rafa. All the little kids love Rafa. So marketing gets you into this, right? Gets you this racket. Now, of course, the third of the big three, Novak, right? Novak put the speed on the map, right? When Novak went from a Wilson Blade 98, right, into this speed, they created the speed for Novak. Even though this is a 100 frame for you and I, his is obviously a little different. But because he hits with it and he promotes it, all the Novak fans out there, will want to use this racket because, hey, it's Novak, top player in the world right now, right? Again, marketing, it's all marketing just to you, right? Novak fans, 
I've seen kids want to swing like Novak, serve like Novak, volley like Novak. And of course, they're going to want the Novak stick to begin with. So, and this is as close as you're going to get. Because this racket looks like what he really uses. A-Speed Pro, right? So that was actually the top three rackets um, that the top three uses. Now, gen definitely generate sales, for sure. Now, they always try to put a face on a racket so that you could relate to them, right? We all know Kevin Anderson is going to be on a CX200 Tour 1820 with that leather grip, right? Kevin ain't doing that well right now, but hey, when he's on top, he's swinging this racket around, putting in some uh, television time, right? This racket gets some attention. So, you know, when you're good, you get more airtime, right? People notice you, you get more fans, you sell more rackets that way. All right, so Yonix now. When Stan the Man was the man, winning slams, we sold a lot of these rackets because it garnered a lot of attention. Everybody wanted Stan's backhand, and they think they could get it with this racket. If you swung like him, you definitely could get it with this racket. But, hey, you know, if you bought this racket and you couldn't swing like him, Yonix got you, man. Right? Lately... It's been the Naomi show. A lot of attention to Naomi dominating the women's tour right now. Uh, got the special edition Naomi racket in white versus blue. Um, definitely geared towards, I mean, women, right? Um, I sell a lot of these because it stands out. And because of Naomi, right? She's good player, good role model right now. And... Her racket stands out on the wall. When she wields this thing around, hey, she dominates. So, and people think they can dominate with this racket too. So, Naomi right now. Now, sticking with the women's tour, how about Serena's new stick? The Serena Williams Blade 102, right? We, we've been watching her in... That Australian Opens wheeled this thing around already, getting some attention because of that gold top. Um, not so. If she won, if she won Australian, I'll bet I, I would sell a lot of these right now because people do like blades. They do like Serena, inch longer, more power, more reach, right? Brings attention to the racket. Right, that's actually a pretty racket. Man or woman um, can use this. So that's the Serena. The only racket that doesn't really have a major face to it is the Pure Drive. But they're basically going on past popularity and past performance. All right, we got Anna Samova here with Fabio. Um, you know, kind of both mediocre players um, but this particular racket uh, doesn't have a major face um, ever since Roddick left tour um, and left this racket they were kind of searching for a person that dominates uh, to put the face of this racket to but um, I mean they got these two right now so I mean nothing major I guess now the one surprising one which is a top selling racket in the nation uh, for the last year and a half. The Clash got no face. There is no face. Uh, this is you and me, guys. It's our face on this racket. Uh, we all played with it. We all liked it. So we are all the faces of this racket. We don't need a pro here. The, the playing with this racket is what caused this racket to be so popular. Us using it. Um, in general. So uh, there aren't too many people on tour using this racket. So this is unlike the norm. Usually people, um, you put a face on the racket, you put a star on the racket, and it does well. 
This is the first time in a very, very, very I don't know, long time, if any time in history, that there is no face on this placard, yet it was in the, it is and was the number one selling racket. So that is because of you and me liking this racket so much, right? We just, it, it just happens. It's an anomaly, but it happens, okay? Uh, I mean, it's people like me promoting it and liking it, people like you guys liking it and buying it. So sometimes we just don't need the star power. We just need the technology to sell it to us, right? So first time and only time here that we don't need a face behind it. All right. So I hope that I explained to you how um, people marketing certain rackets have influenced your purchases, um, except for this one. All right. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.